What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a small list of WWE superstars that were released in 2019. Let's get right into this. So 2019 for me has been a little bit of a crazy year whenever it comes to WWE superstars being released and asking for their release. Uh, of course, All Elite Wrestling did launch in 2019, and at the time they were launching, they were offering WWE superstars that were signed with WWE large amounts to leave WWE and sign with All Elite. WWE, to retaliate, they were denying all of these requests to leave, and in some cases, they were signing WWE superstars that were having their contract end. They were going to be extending their contracts and paying them a large amount to do so. So they were giving their current WWE superstars large amount contracts, which I thought was a lot of amazing stuff for WWE to do. But the only reason they were doing that is because All Elite Wrestling is there now. And WWE knows that if the WWE superstar were to leave, they'd go to All Elite Wrestling, which seems to be doing pretty good as of late. So I'm just going to be sharing all of 2019's releases up first is Ty Dillinger. He was released in February 22nd, 2019. Now, while in WWE, he honestly did not do much. And for me, he was not that impressive. He was in NXT where I felt he should have stayed. But whenever he got called up to the main roster, for me, it didn't make sense at the time because he didn't accomplish anything in NXT. And he definitely didn't accomplish anything on the main roster. After being released, however, he did go to All Elite Wrestling, which is why WWE started to deny people's requests to leave. And in All Elite Wrestling, at first, he started to be really strong, but now he starts to be fizzling out, in my opinion, to become more of a mid-carder while in All Elite Wrestling. But he is one of the first ones to go to All Elite Wrestling. Next up is Hideo Itami. He was released February 22nd as well, and for me... Yes, he is an older wrestler. I didn't realize how old he was at the time. But while he was in NXT, he seemed to be doing really good. But after getting called up to 205 Live, he wasn't doing that great of things. So it makes sense why he was released from the company. Now, after being released from the WWE, a lot of people assumed he'd go back to the Indies, which is what he did before the WWE. But it turns out he actually signed with New Japan Wrestling. And he seems to be doing pretty good over there. So um, that's actually pretty good to hear. Next is TJP, which is one of my favorite cruiserweights from 205 Live. He ended up leaving February 22nd as well, and he actually requested his release as well. Now with him, he did end up signing with TNA where he was suicide back in the day. He wore the mask for suicide, and he was amazing in the ring. Now he is back just as TJP. He's not donning the mask anymore. He's just his own character, TJP. And he seems to be doing pretty good right there, and he seems to be enjoying it a lot more than he did while he was in WWE. Next up is one of All Elite Wrestling's biggest stars right now, and that is Dean Ambrose. He was released April 30th, 2019, and he decided to move over to All Elite Wrestling. He felt like he was being treated unfairly in WWE. He didn't have control over anything creative he wanted to do with his character. So now he's back as John Moxley in All Elite Wrestling, where he seems to be doing pretty good. Next up is Goldust. Now, there's not an exact time where he was released. I couldn't find anything online, but it was early 2019. After leaving WWE in 2019, he did have to make his three months no compete clause and then he ended up going to All Elite Wrestling where his first match there was against his brother Cody Rhodes, which was an amazing match. I thought it was awesome and it was a really good match, a very emotional match, but it was awesome to see brother versus brother once again. Now he was still in All Elite Wrestling. He says he really is enjoying it and he's actually enjoying wrestling once again because in WWE, he wasn't wrestling that much. Now in All Elite Wrestling, he's wrestling quite a bit, so he's loving it, so that's awesome to hear. Next up is Arn Anderson, and again, I couldn't find an exact date as to when he was released from the WWE, but I remember exactly what happened. Basically, Alicia Fox was came to the arena, and she seemed to be drunk, and Arn Anderson let her compete in the ring while she was intoxicated, which is a huge no for the WWE. And as a huge producer and a backstage presence, safety is one of the WWE's number one concerns. If you see there's somebody that is unfit to compete in the ring, you're supposed to pull the plug and you're supposed to change the match on the spot. 
And that's something Iron Anderson didn't do. He sent Alicia Fox into the ring anyways to compete while intoxicated, and she almost injured an opponent. So because of this, WWE released Iron Anderson, and a lot of people hated that. A lot of people thought that was unfair, and Alicia Fox should have been treated that way as well, and she should have been released, which I understand. But she was intoxicated at the time. She didn't really know what she was doing. Iron Anderson just let her go into the ring where she could have injured somebody. And safety is a huge concern of WWE these days. So they released him. He was with WWE in his backstage presence since 2001. So it is sad to see him go. Next up is Rhino, one of ECW's originals. And I believe he was released around May. Now, after his release, the reason he asked for his release and he was okay with being released is because he wasn't being used in the WWE too much. He was the first ever SmackDown Tag Team Champion with Heath Slater, but after that, he kind of fizzled out. He stopped doing stuff on screen. He was still appearing with Heath Slater, but he wasn't doing much other than that. 2018, at the end of 2018, he still wasn't competing, so he was released, I want to say, around May 2019. Now, however, he is in TNA, and he seems to be doing pretty good. He has the rivalry with RVD going right now, which at first, whenever he first came to TNA, and he first debuted back on Impact, he was teaming with RVD in the ECW Originals. Now RVD and Rhino are in a rivalry, so it seems to be taking off pretty good, and the story behind it is awesome. And I really like to see somebody that really loved to wrestle getting the chance to wrestle once again whenever WWE wasn't letting him. Next up is the recent WWE releases, and that is Sin Cara, which was released December 8th, 2019. Now, Sin Cara actually asked for his release over social media about a month or two prior to his release. And for me, I feel like there's so many missed opportunities with Sin Cara. Of course, the Sin Cara character, there was somebody else that played the character before. That person was dangerous in the ring, so they ended up getting released. And then the current Sin Cara, which I believe is Unico, uh, he took on the Sin Cara character. So if WWE wanted, they could have just released Unico and had somebody else play the character. But they decided to release the character because over the years, the character didn't do much. It was supposed to be somebody that would start selling a lot of merch like Rey Mysterio did and a lot of masks, which he wasn't as successful as a Rey Mysterio was. So that just never happened. They didn't get the merch sales like they thought. In the ring, he was doing incredible things at first, but after a while, they just stopped using him. For me, I feel like they could have put him, in, put him back in NXT where I think he would have took off. Or I feel like they could have simply put him in 205 Live and have him be a cruiserweight because I feel like he was capable of doing that. And of course, I love to see him in the ring because he did great things, but it always was underused by WWE, so it makes sense for his release. Next up is The Ascension. A tag team got released, Connor and Victor. They were also released December 8th. And for me, they're the only ones that were recently released that did not ask for their release. But it makes sense after being called up from NXT. In NXT, they did good. On the main roster, they didn't do too much. At first, they were being used quite a bit for stories and matches. But for the longest time, I haven't seen them compete in real matches. They've been in tag team turmoil matches and appearances here and there in backstage segments. But they never really had anything going for them. As for their characters, I thought they were pretty good and pretty unique. It's just WWE did not use them the way that I feel like they should have. And it makes sense why they were released because they were not being used in the ring. And the last one that was released in 2019 as of when I'm making this video is Luke Harper. Months and months ago, he was asking for his release over social media. He was released December 8th as well. Now, this one here, for me, doesn't make sense because back whenever him and Rowan were the tag team, SmackDown tag team champions, uh, Rowan ended up getting injured and he was off for, I want to say, almost a year. At the time, I felt like Luke Harper could have been pushed a little bit more. His name was shortened to just Harper and I felt like they could have used him a little bit more. They could have started to push him in solo competition for either the Intercontinental Championship, the United States Championship, or just having singles rivalries along the way. I felt, felt like that would be something that they could do with him because that's something I would love to see him in. And then they ended up, after Rowan ended up returning to the ring, and instead of teaming with Harper, 
they WWE started having Rowan team with Dan O'Brien and started to do good things with him. So again, Harper was not being used. Then in 2019, Harper's name was brought back to as Luke Harper. They gave him his full name back, which I felt like, why are they going to do this unless they're going to start using him? But then once again, they never started using Harper again. And then in December, they ended up releasing him. So I felt like with Harper, there was so many missed opportunities. He did have a couple matches. He did hold a singles championship. But he, other than that, he hasn't had much going for him over the past little while. I feel like he's going to be doing big things out of everybody on this list. Number one, Dean Ambrose being in All Elite Wrestling, doing great things there. I feel like he is a top star. Goldust and Rhino seems to be doing pretty good as well. Goldust and All Elite Wrestling, Rhino and TNA. But I feel like everybody else, Harper is the next best because Harper, I always felt like he could compete in the ring. He can do great things in the ring. He does his Hurricanrana. He does fast moves, which is something for a bigger person you wouldn't expect. So I did always love to see him in the ring. It is sad for me to see WWE releasing people once again, and now that WWE is out of not releasing people and denying people's requests to be released, seems like they're back to their old ways of releasing people whenever they see fit, or people that are not being used in the ring for WWE, just releasing them and making room for new talents. I feel like WWE is out of the kind of being scared days of All Elite Wrestling picking up their talents, and if it doesn't seem financially set to keep a talent, they are finally releasing them now. So it's going to be interesting with these recent releases to see who is going to be released next and what might happen. Comment down below who you believe might get released next. I actually plan on doing a video sharing my thoughts on who I feel is going to be released next in WWE. But I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next video. Please take care. Peace.